Hey guys, I feel like some of you may have seen the title of this video and gone, oh god, Gretchen, no. No, you're not jumping off the bandwagon, are you? Uh, no, I'm not jumping off the bandwagon. I mean, I have my Rattle the Stars tattoo and Sarah's books will always be so important to me. I'm just saying that I maybe had some issues. But first, we're gonna head into the non-spoilery review of A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. Obviously, this is the third book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series, so if you haven't read books one and two, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Um, there are gonna be spoilers for those. So, here we go. Uh, the book starts off with Feyre obviously in the spring court pretending to be back with Tamlin and I was honestly really nervous for this portion of the book because I was like oh boy this is gonna go to some weird places ain't it but actually it just involves Feyre taking names and making people pay and she is just ruthless I was just I'm gonna be honest, I really enjoyed it uh, just because, you know, she is just going for it and she is so smartly, like, planning her steps and going at it and Lucian obviously is the one person who's like, uh, anyone else think that this is weird? And she plays into that really well and she just drives Tamlin nuts and I mean, I can be a little bit vindictive too and I really enjoyed it. My only thing with that part was that it didn't last very long. Like, Feyre had this big huge plan that she put into place but all said and done, the reunion of everybody from the Night Court comes pretty quick. Granted, was I also looking forward to that? Yes, but I'm just saying the amount of like, you know, take no shit and taking names that Feyre was doing in the Spring Court, excellent. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, but yes, it does not take that long for her to get back with Reese. Ah, I love those two together. And this book is just a continuation of their relationship being just completely goals for everyone in this world. And even having, you know, some issues together and dealing with some things and navigating being High Lord and High Lady and what that means for them and... Feyre, you know, trying to adjust, but Reed's also having to adjust to, you know, not just being the one with the power to say yes or no, and the whole dynamic that that causes. I really love that um, Cassian and Nesta, like, just every time they went to speak to each other, I was like, oh boy, oh boy, I am so excited because, again, Sarah knows how to write characters with chemistry that are just like, yeah, yeah, you guys are great together. And I loved it. Um, I loved, again, that that also got to build. It didn't, much like with Reese and Feyre, wasn't just like, you know, boom, instant love. It was, they got to forge a friendship. They We got to watch them become friends. And that was really, really great. And I loved that so much. Um, as Amran Moore just that whole group of people work together so well and function as a unit so well and just even when they're just together you know kind of providing some exposition through discussion i always know that i'm going to enjoy the experience because i love the way that they all interact with each other which is always nice i think where my potentially unpopular opinion starts to pop in is that i felt like the plot of this novel was a bit all over the place and I don't know if this is just me recently not being able to have books like close series the way that I want them to but it kind of felt like this book a was all over the place there were a lot of things to cover a lot of new things introduced um, and still so a lot of information being given to you like new information to learn about this world and this place um, while the plot was also like, and over here, and over here, and because we need this to happen, this will happen now. And there were some things that felt natural and some things that didn't, uh, but even so, those things sometimes just felt like they were convenient. Um, like new characters and new things popping up to be convenient and help, you know, fight the battle that was ongoing. So... 
Yeah, that was a bit weird. I think there were also some characters that performed an about face a bit too easily. Uh, characters that, you know, we thought of one way for two books, and then in the third book it's like, and surprise! And you're probably thinking, oh, I know who she's talking about, because that would be obvious, but like there's actually multiple characters where we're supposed to have thought one thing of them for a couple of books, and now it's like, ta-da! And it, and it didn't feel earned because we weren't spending any time with those characters and we didn't see this transformation happen or we didn't, you know, really get to, to earn that as, as readers and they didn't earn it in our eyes. So that was a bit weird. And again, convenient. I think that's just my thing. I mean, I still gave this book four stars, don't get me wrong. I'm nitpicking here now. But as I was reading it, it just started to feel... Like, there were a lot of things rolling into each other that just helped the book get where it was going. So, there's that. I'd also like to spend a second talking about one of the controversies that I saw come up with this book. And this is a bit of a spoiler, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I'm going to hold up the book. Um, and when I put the book down, you'll know that you can come back to us and watch um, because I will stop talking about spoilers again. So yeah, here we go. Are you gone? Are you gone? This means spoiler. Okay. Um, I'm talking about the fact that it was revealed in the back half of this book that Moore is gay. Um, and I guess not gay, which is what I originally thought people were freaking out about when I read the spoiler comments before the book came out. Um, because Moore does say that she enjoys men and women, just prefers women over men, but, you know, will have sex relationships with both, um, which is not particularly gay. That does not make her a lesbian. Um, puts her on the spectrum a little bit more, you know, than that. Again, I'm straight. I am traditionally female. Maybe this is just me, but it felt like all of the sudden in A Court of Wings and Ruin, there was like a bunch of people who were, you know, um, gay, um, bi, all of a sudden there was like multiple, multiple pairings like that. And it's not that they shouldn't have been in the book. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm all for representation. I'm saying that like, where was this before? Because in all the discussion of mates, of marriage, like this kind of relationship between two people of the same sex, like it didn't, come up um, when discussing mating bonds people and with, throughout all of the books use very traditionally male to female relations and like there are ways that the mating bond works that affect the males differently than females so it was just like boom all of a the sudden there's like you know a high lord with a male mate um the discussion of multiple female pairings more coming out and it's just like where was all this before kind of a thing. And that was really weird to me. And also the fact that it comes up very late towards the end of the book. And then it's kind of laughed off by Pharaoh saying, you know, when you're comfortable talking about this, I can't wait to play matchmaker and more laughs and everything is okay. And also she just decides to tell Pharaoh because like, Pharaoh attacked. I, it didn't like go over smoothly with me just gonna leave that there of just like wondering where all this was before and again not that you know a gay character's point is not that they are gay they are a character who interacts with the story who engages in the plot who also happens to be gay that's how they should be used so i'm not saying that Moore's entire storyline should have been like her struggling or with her sexuality but also again with this happening towards the end of the book and just being kind of brushed off with it all of a sudden being like boom same-sex pairings without any kind of discussion when that hasn't been a thing in the first two books it was it was weird it was weird and again i'm straight i'm traditionally female i you know try and stay aware of these kinds of issues but i understand that i still have a lot to learn so maybe you know this is coming from a completely uneducated and unaware place 
And so if you guys have thoughts on this, I would love to hear them down in the comments. Just warn people before you start talking about it that you are going to be talking about something spoilery. But I mean, I would love to engage in a conversation on how y'all feel about all of this in this book because I'm not sure how I feel about it. And so I would love to, to talk to you guys about it. Okay, spoilers over. My only other issue with this book was the ending. And anyone who's read it at this point is going, what the heck? And of course, I'm not going to spoiler anything. Um, but I will just say that convenient. Convenient. And that, I don't know, maybe this is me being super jaded and books never being able to finish in the way that you want them to and always wanting something else or maybe thinking that you had a better idea of how to make the end of the story better. And so maybe this is me just being like, I want the impossible ending, which is fabulous and amazing, even if I can't tell you what it is. But like, again, plot points in this novel, trying to cram too much in and trying to connect all these crammed in plot points by convenient things that roll into each other and then the ending kind of ticking away its punch by being convenient. So again, I love the book. I really do. I love this series as a whole. I think my favorite book out of all of them is the second one just because that was the one where I went, oh, this did not go the way that I expected at all. Um, and really because the second book allowed Feyre to have a bad reaction to these crazy awful things that she went through and then to allow her and Tamlin's relationship to fracture to show that you know sometimes this first love that you have isn't your last love and sometimes there is love that is harmful and then to show how she's able to heal herself and you know find Reese who is perfect and you know, show how she changes and changes the people who she loves uh, during that. And so the second book to me is really just the like progression of the character that is Feyre in so many things. And that's what I really, really love about it. And it just like I got to the end of the second book and I cried because Sarah had finally given Beauty and the Beast like this actual heroine with agency and a way to craft the story that produced a strong female character which I loved. Uh, the first book was a fine opening. I have no issues with it. It was a good book. Um, and then the third book again I have some issues with it um, but it, it's a good book and I have no overarching like large like oh how could you end the series that way especially knowing that we are going to get more books. So, uh, as the back of the book says, the series will continue in 2018, not with Feyre as the main character, she's gonna switch it up, but we are gonna get more, and so maybe some of these things that felt like they were just kind of tossed in at the end of this book will be explained more, but again, it's kind of the Cassandra Clare effect of like, I had planned to stop the series here, but then I decided to keep going, so now I need to keep going somehow and do stuff. I don't know. Again, I love Sarah's books. I do. I have her words tattooed on my body. I'm a pretty big fangirl. Throne of Glass will always be my favorite series, but A Court of Thorns and Roses, especially the second book, holds a very, very dear place in my heart. Overall, the story did not end anywhere that I did not expect and love it to end. And overall, with this trilogy, I am very, very happy. So just a couple of issues, and again, feel free to talk to me about them down in the comments if there's something I missed, if there's something that you feel that I said incorrectly or maybe didn't understand. Again, I understand that I was talking about some things that I don't always come from the best place of understanding, even as I try to keep myself aware. There's, you know, some things that I will never understand because of the person that I am. And people who didn't watch the spoilery bit now are really, really confused. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. So anyways, uh, I'm going to sign off, guys, and I will talk to you next week. Bye!